Now, uh, they're only 15 centimetres in length, they have black and yellow bellies and they give architects and developers absolute nightmares. Yeah, Mike Dilger put his wellies on and entered the world of the great crested newt. Once commonly found lurking in the bottom of ponds, numbers of the great crested newt have dropped dramatically in recent years. Consequently, they're among the most protected animals in the country. Not even builders and their bulldozers can move them without a licence. But here at the University of Kent, they're not considered a building's nuisance. In fact, they're positively encouraged. So I've come along with my special licence to find out exactly what's going on. Great crested newts have naturally colonised the artificial ponds which Professor Richard Griffiths has created here. It's a species that has been declining right across Britain and indeed Europe. By monitoring the whereabouts of every individual and working out how newts move between the ponds, a picture is being built up of what makes their perfect home. Traps are set once a week and I'm here to help Richard and his students lay them. Dusk is the perfect time to set the traps. Great crested newts are active at night during the breeding season and will often wriggle into a pot and get trapped until the morning. How's that? Yeah, that's Lovely. Okay. Being the impatient naturalist that I am, I can't wait until tomorrow morning. It's now 10 o'clock and Rich has brought me to a special spot to try and get a glimpse. They don't spend much of their lives actually in water, do they? No, in fact, newts actually spend most of their lives on land. And when you're doing newt conservation, it's crucially important to think not just about the pond, but about the habitat and the wider landscape as well. There's one right ah, there, and yeah. a male. There we go, there's Lovely. a male. And he's got a the distinctive <sighs> jagged crest, very big crest on that one. It's a female as to, well. To uh, impress the females. And there's a female down there. He can probably see her and smell her. That's how he's giving her a good sniff. Oh, taking that's chase. Lovely. There we go. He's very interested in that female. And he started waving his tail. Oh, and that was, that was a sort of a whip of the tail there. They do this amazing display. It's thought to sort of waft the newt equivalent of Chanel for men <laughs> towards the, the female and, and, and really get her going. Well, it's just delightful news. There are so many newts out tonight, and that bodes really well. Fingers crossed we'll catch them in the bottle tops tomorrow, and then we'll see them up close and personal. Morning, Richard. Good morning, Mike. Everyone's out bright and early. Everyone's out bright and early this morning. And we've started to find a few newts yeah. already. This one's obviously not a great crested. No, that's a male smooth newt, very abundant in this area. We've got ourselves a great crested newt. We have indeed. So let's fish him out. Yeah. What a beautiful, that's beautiful a, animal. That's a fully grown male. Uh, he's got a crest. The crest tends to sort of flop down when they're out of water. And also this, this lovely white flash on the tail there. And if we turn him over, we can see this very striking black and orange belly, which throughout wildlife basically says, if you've got that coloration, I don't taste very nice. And it's these markings on the belly, a kind of newt fingerprint, which enables Richard to identify specific individuals in an unusual identity parade. Field mugshots. I think this one might be Adam. That dot and that dot are very distinctive there and there. Once caught, it's a good opportunity to do a general health check and take a look at their life history. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Some individuals live for up to 15 years, whilst others take gap years in their breeding season. And it's also been found that they continuously move between the ponds. This is valuable data, which provides the bigger picture for newt conservation everywhere. Well, today the guys have just recorded a brand new newt, and they very kindly named him after me. Say hello to Michael. Hopefully, thanks to the project at the University of Kent here, the future for this little fella is going to be a whole lot brighter.
And Mike joins us now. It's, it's a marvellous thing to have a Newt named after you, isn't it? It's it, the that's pinnacle the of my career, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> we have a still of the Newt, actually, Michael the Newt. And the most remarkable thing is you know their, finger, uh, their bellies are as unique as a human fingerprint. Right. But look at that. When we circled it, we found out there was a one. Aww. Michael the One Show Newt. It's meant to be. But we don't want Russell being left out of this no. Newt chat. No, so we had a word with I, the Wildlife Trust. And they're very kindly wow. arranged. I thought that was real for a minute. For us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have an association with newts as well. Do you know? Yeah, usually after a bottle and a half of champagne. <laughs> oh, thickens. Well, congratulations. You've just been. Thank a, you. You've just adopted a great crested newt. Thank you. A uh, great crested newt. Thank you. One of the highest accolades you've probably ever received in your entire professional career. Uh, the highest. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. This is really emotional. Thank you, everybody. Cheers for everything. Thank you. So why and how, then, Mike, are um, great crested newts being protected? It's the old devil, Alex. It's habitat loss. Ponds being filled in, ponds being polluted. Don't forget there's an animal that spends a lot of its time out of ponds as well. Um, so, you know, tidying for the British countryside is not at all good for it. Don't forget this is protected on Schedule 5 of the 1981 Wildlife and Countryside Act. And it's afforded the maximum protection under the eyes of the law. And it's astonishing that in uh, Doncaster in October 2010, Basically, 1,500 homes were in danger of being flooded, so the Environment Agency had to, had to stop their emergency flood repair to make sure that the newts were protected for six months during the hibernation. Uh, and I know there's a big push to get loads of ponds into people's gardens. If they do put one in, what are the chances of great crested newts turning up? Well, they, we've got a map as well showing where great crested newts are, uh, Matt. They're, they're throughout um, England and Wales. They're very thinly spread wherever they are. Um, and uh, we can see the kind of black bits. That's basically where they are. Yeah. Uh, they're beautiful, beautiful animals. Where are we? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, they're around. There's a lot around. We can yeah. see from the map. There's a lot around. They're not in the north, though, are they? More in the south. <clears throat> but they're not the only types of newts, are they, that are protected? We have three species of newt in the UK. We've got the large, great crested newt on the left. We have the smooth and the palmate newt. You cannot touch the great crested newt. The smooth and the palmates are distributed all over the UK. The smooths are much spottier, and also they have a huge crest right down their back. The palmates have got kind of webbed feet and they're found in the west and the north of the country. And the really interesting thing is you can go out and handle those if you're very careful, take a net, catch them, show children in the hand, and then very carefully with wet hands, put them back in the water afterwards. Brilliant stuff. Thanks ever so much indeed. Mike. Thanks again.